In today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how we can create these product shots in a very simple, straightforward, easy, quick way. So without much further ado, let's get into it. So the motivation for this tutorial came from a viewer like you who, who emailed me and said, Hey Mike, you know, I like your tutorial videos, but I'd really love to see one on creating some virtual product shots. And the uh, person who emailed it over sent me some, uh, some examples. Um, and, and I thought these were great. And I was like, this is a perfect use case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create something similar to this a couple times, two different versions of it. And I'm going to be using some Adobe products to do it. I'm going to grab some labels and logos and stuff from Adobe stock. I am going to be adjusting those and making some modifications in illustrator. I'm going to be rendering and staging the 3D scene and applying all the labels and everything inside of Adobe Substance 3D Stager. And then finally, I will be adjusting the final images in Photoshop. So all kind of Adobe tools. Since the majority of our work in this tutorial is going to be in Stager, and probably the one that you know the least if you're watching this, uh, we're gonna go ahead and start there. Now, I do have an entire Stager tutorial series. Uh, you can find that link down below this video. So I'm not gonna get into the super details of things, but I'll just kind of uh, touch upon them and you can find out more for yourself if you'd like. So, okay. So inside of Stager, the very first question you're gonna ask as you're building out a 3D scene is like, how do I get models in here? Totally normal question, totally fair. Um, and we've got a bunch that are built in here by default and in, in this current, and these are the models that are here in the current build of Stager. Um, additionally, you can go online into the Adobe Substance 3D Asset Library, and there's a bunch of models that are in here as well. So you can get, you know, if like if you're doing uh, products designs, you'll probably be looking for like, if you want a bottle, you can look at all these different types of bottles that we have. Um, you may also have like your very specific hero element, maybe a CAD model, maybe something that was modeled in another application or photogrammetry done in the or in sampler application or something. It doesn't matter. You can bring in any 3D model for the most part into Substance Stager. For this first demo, I'm going to actually be using one that's already built in here. It's actually just the soap bottle. So whether it's on the, um, the, your desktop or inside the assets panel here to the left, all you have to do is just drag and drop it into the scene. You can see it pop down there. Awesome. All right, great. So now what we have is our model with these default materials on it. So the first, the next step is you just got to get materials on there. Um, that's the next tab over here. So for the basics of this, I'm just going to, for the bottle itself, let's make that glass. I'll type in glass in your search. Got it. Bam. Oh, got to make sure that you just have that component selected that you want. Cool. And then for the top, grab these two. And then we'll, if we have a, uh, a nice, some nice plastic selections within here. And I really like this cloudy plastic. So I'll go ahead and throw that on there too. Oh, by the way, if you're seeing this, it looked like this and you're like, man, that doesn't look like glass or plastic. Uh, it's because you're in the real time uh, viewer. This is a faster interface. There's no lag time or anything in here, but you're going to get less realistic results in order to activate the ray tracer that gives you the glassy look and that kind of thing. You can just activate that up here. Um, so the next step, obviously, how do I get my labels, my logos, all that stuff on there? So uh, full disclosure, I'm not the best label logo graphic designer yet in the world, but I, um, so what I did was I grabbed uh, a few labels and things for this tutorial from Adobe stock. Um, and I'll go ahead and navigate to those in my, the first round in my, uh, file browser here. So yeah, so you can put pretty much any image file into your application again, and into stager, you can use JPEGs, PNGs. I'll use an illustrator file later. Um, and you can use, you know, your, your, uh, creative cloud library that's built into stager, or you can just drag and drop them from your desktop. So like, if I wanted this and I wanted to just put this label on there, awesome. Can plop that down there. It kind of wraps around. Amazing. I don't like that one. I delete it. I grab this next one, the scrapes one, throw that on there. Beautiful. Great. Okay. So I've got that on there. I can scale it again, make any sort of modifications that I want. Very intuitive stuff. So we're going to place that right there in the middle. Awesome. On the ray tracer. Man, that is looking amazing. Just one thing missing. I need this, this grapes, we'll call it grape soap. Uh, we'll go ahead and throw some liquid in the middle there. So how do you get liquid? Uh, you basically need geometry for it. So we've got this body mesh. I'm just going to hit control D to duplicate that. Rename it liquid. And now all I'm going to do is just take that, that body. I'm just going to, I don't need the graphic on it. So go ahead and delete that. 
Um, and I'm just gonna scale it down because like the liquid's inside the bottle. So I'll just do that. So I'll just scale it down to like 0.97. Awesome. And then what I need to do is once you have geometry, um, you need to put a uh, material on it that looks like liquid. There's milk. Um, I think there's another one in here as well. We've got different, um, you know, liquidy materials, but the beer actually works out really well. Now, when I drag and drop it onto the liquid and I turn on the ray tracer, oh, that looks great. Uh, a little bit too much like urine for my preference, and this is called grape, so we'll go ahead and make it a slightly um, purple color. So I'll just go into the materials, um, scroll down here to the absorption color. If, if that's hidden, it's inside the interior here, so just expand that out. And then you can just grab a, a nice, like, simple, maybe not quite that, that purple, just like a little light purple color. Awesome, great. We've got a purpley hand soap. Uh, we are ready to go with the next step, which is kind of staging it out. So the images that were shared, um, a lot of just like, you know, straightforward stuff, geometric shapes. Um, we'll kind of, kind of uh, live that life a little bit, right? And like, if you wanted, you know, if you wanted to make this geometric shape and you've got this concrete, you can also go to the asset library in here and be like, look in the materials um, and grab any type in concrete and grab any like, number of these um that, that you could possibly want and now it that doesn't really fit this persona of of what i'm building here with this grape soda so I, like this is a very clean design very simple design so i'm just going to kind of uh lean into that a little bit and actually both of these are it's just kind of kind of my aesthetic to not quite be so uh grungy that way um all right cool so building now i'm going to go ahead and switch back to the faster mode here the real-time mode uh, and then I'm just going to go back to my my models. I'm just going to start placing some things in here. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to place a ground plane, make it uh, bigger, and then go ahead and I'm gonna zoom out. And uh, I'm going to hit Control D again to duplicate this plane. Uh, and then I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees that way. So it gives us a nice little back plane there. Awesome. Great. Now I can take this, um, lay this down here. And then, like I said, there's, there's just some... Um, uh, simple, like geometric shapes. You can put like a little cube on there. It's awesome. Just go ahead and, you know, I can just scale the top this down so it's not quite so perfectly geometric. Grab the soap bottle. You get this little circle in the middle. If I grab that, you can see, oh, let me grab that. You can see that it will, um, so yeah, if you grab the center one, uh, you can, it'll snap to the face of whatever object. So it's, it's really nice for placing it on things. So, just go ahead and get it nice and centered on top there. Great. So just rotate this around so the label's facing forward. Awesome. All right. So I've got this amazing. Kind of want to go in here. Uh, just kind of want to like, you know what? Actually, the reference we have, there's a lot of like things at, at, at angles. So we'll go ahead and just, um, and I'll just, oh, whoa. Make these. <laughs> uh, scale the, uh, these a little bit bigger. So just do that. Whoop. And that. So that I can get a little bit of angle and still not totally see the background. Awesome. All right. So we'll turn on the ray tracer. Looking amazing. Um, if the all white is your thing, you can keep that. Uh, for me, it's, it's it's a little bit difficult to read off of the background here. So I usually will. I don't know. Like you know what? For this, we can. I I I, usually, I tend to use too many like solid colors all the time. Uh, for this one, I let's go ahead and put a little texture back there. Um, I'm just making this up as I go along. There's some paper in here. Um, oh, there's a paper pattern. It's great. Let's go and just put like a wallpaper pattern back there. Um, so we've got that. We can go ahead and, you know, all of the materials in the asset library, they're all parametric, lots of sliders. So this, uh, the scale of that is too big. So I can just repeat that down a little bit. Um, we've got some default settings. So I can go with like a green glow. Oh, that's fun. Like that pattern. Uh, blue rough. Ooh, shiny orange. I do, I kind of, like, I, I really had a reaction to this one, so I like that. So I'm going to go ahead and just change the pattern colors on this to, like, more, more of kind of like that purpley look that we're going for. And then, so, like, we'll, we'll see, we'll just keep it, like, a nice little, like, two-tone, like a little purple and a blue. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Let's keep that back there. All right, great. And you know what, if we want, if that's, like, too much, if it's too distracting... Um, what we can do also is I'll, uh, create a camera here. And I think so, and some of the, some of the products, 
shots were actually vertical. So I'll go ahead and just switch this to like a vertical layout. True. Done there. It feels a little bit wide angle. So I'll go ahead and uh, make the lens a little more telephoto. Awesome. Now, if again, if that background is a little bit too distracting, what you can do too is you can add depth of field. And then you just set the focal point on the object. Take down that blur amount. And it can kind of just blur out back there. Um, this is like pretty super vertical. So I'll just... It's down a little bit. There you go. All right, great. All right, so let's say this is a position and everything that I want. Um, go ahead and keep it like that. Yeah. Um, the last step in this process is to uh, get your lighting set up. So I'll just drop a little sphere in here so you can kind of see what's going on. By default in Stager, there is an environment. Um, there's like a 360 photograph of a photo studio in the scene that's driving our base lighting. So you can see it here, there's a bright spot there. If I hold down shift and the right mouse button, you can see it's spinning around and around. That's awesome. It really helps us, um, uh, you know, position the shadows and the lighting where we want. All this is doing is it's saying like where this is bright, there's a light source. Let's cast a shadow in the opposite direction um, and illuminate the scene as, you know, as if that's a light source. Very easy to work with. We've also got, you know, the standard 3D lights in here. If I wanted to drop in um, an area light, you know, you can do that. You can adjust the intensity of that. Um, you can change the color of that light if you wanted to add some some individual lights in there. But but truthfully, the um, the image-based lighting that we have, these environment lights are super helpful. Because again, I can just drag and drop different ones in here, give them a test, see see the way that they look. Um, and again, I'm just I just left this sphere in here because it helps me understand what's going on in the surroundings. And then once you find one that you like, I tend to, I really like this, uh, this, this is like the standard studio one is good. I also like the, uh, to Tomoko or Tomoko studio. It's fine. In the and then once you get the kind of lighting and you can continue to like, uh, I mean, you don't need my permission to do this, but you can continue to compose it around as you see fit. Um, until you kind of get the lighting setup that you want. So, Keep trying them, keep rotating them um, until you kind of get kind of get the look that you're going for. And if you want to, you can do like there's exterior ones. There's also like there's more of these in the asset library if you ever want, or if you like wanted to go to Polyhaven is a great website that's not Adobe or it doesn't sponsor this channel or anything. Uh, but if you want to just kind of play around with that, you can you can get some different ones. So once you're kind of, um, I'm not happy with this lighting, so it's a little bit too, uh, a little bit too much. So let me just get like a nice softer one. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of balancing between like what's too reflective versus what's also like not giving me the interest level. Um, so I'm just going to do that. Let's turn up the intensity on this a little bit. Yeah. All right, we'll call we'll call this a lighting situation that that we want. This is uh, this is looking pretty good. Something else that you can do is you can you can like tone down the intensity of these and then just use this as like a secondary like an environment light and then put you know you put spotlights and and area lights in there. It's really it's really you know you'll find you'll find your groove on that one a little bit, but. Um, yeah. Okay. Great. So we got this done. I will add. Let me, let me just play with this depth of field just a little bit more. Go ahead, take this way down. Just like I just want like a touch of it. Here we go. Cool. All right. Great. That helps. That helps separate off that background a little bit. Um, but just for a second, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna grab these and see if I want to change the material of the cube to maybe a more purple color. Again, the nice thing about doing it this way is it's really iterative. Like you, you can work really quickly and try just different things. Um, and if I want to attach that material to this ground plane, I can select the ground plane, get my little uh, eyedropper and just slide that. Oh, that does look a little bit better. All right, cool. So we've got our grapes, we've got lots of purple surrounding it. Um, want to center this up in the middle. Feeling pretty good about this. Now it's time to go to render. Actually, first, let me save this uh, scene out in a way that makes sense. So I'll call this, yeah, grape soap. Awesome, save it out. And I can click this render tab up here at the top. So bring me into a totally different view. Uh, all you have to do here is make sure it's being rendered to the right spot, right name. You can you can render multiple cameras if you want. Uh, we only have one here, so we'll just keep that one selected. I changed the format to a PSD because I want to write it out as a Photoshop file. And then for the, uh, we'll just keep this medium for now. 
and then full resolution, awesome. And then just click render. And this should just take just a minute to get it, uh, to get it together. I lied, it did not take a minute. It took exactly 17 seconds, okay. And so I can just show this in the folder, awesome. And then I got this here, I can just double click. Awesome, it'll open in, um, open here in Photoshop, awesome. You can center it up. The great thing about this is it gives you the, um, the different layers. So, you know, it gives you the, the 3D elements, but also gives you these layers if you want to isolate and grab different components or like the Z depth space, if you want to add more blur or any, any uh, depth based um, effects to it. Or you can just go in and use like all of your normal Photoshop witchcraft stuff and, um, you know, make any adjustments that you see fit. Uh, if I see like an opening here, we can also take advantage of the um, generative fill inside of Photoshop now. So if I wanted to add like a purple grape, I don't know how this will work. Uh, but again, you can just throw something in there too. It's a really, really, really nice way of, of um, uh, adding some additional components to your scene as well. Again, like you're going to be working with your uh, hero asset. Um, and so you may not necessarily want to, um, you, you may, you know, you may not, you obviously won't want to do that with your hero element, but for, um, for the purposes of this, like just adding those grapes in there actually helps the composition. Um, and actually, let me see, let me see if there's a, uh, let me do that again, but let me, um, let me throw some more down here too. Okay, press my luck with these. I don't like these as much. I'll just go back to that, uh, to that original one that I had. All right, there we go. Okay, so got some grapes in there. Um, feeling really good about this. Ready to render this out. Done. Again, super simple. This is just a really straightforward um, way of doing this. But again, like you can use all of your, all of your skills and all your abilities to to make this in no time. So let's go ahead and hop into the to the next example here. So for this one, I was super excited because I found this apple juice label on, again, on Adobe Stock. Super fun, colorful, silly. Um, this apple's sweating. It's gotten a bite taken out of This apple's been through some stuff. But here we are. Let's get going with it. Let's make, I want to make an apple juice box label based on this label. So um, in order to get my, my juice box, again, I went to the asset library, went up here and typed in, I think I'm just typing juice. And again, there's this juice box set which I can grab. I downloaded it. Awesome. Got it in my folder here. Um, just go up into my models. And again, I can just drag and drop it in. Uh, you get two by default. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the one because I wanna keep, uh, I like the one with the straw in it, so we'll go ahead and keep that one. Um, yeah, go ahead and delete that guy. So now we got this. Awesome. So we'll go pull out of this group just so it lives by itself. So now when I grab this, I can just move that around. Awesome. Okay, great. I don't want the seam on the side that I'm looking at, so I'll go ahead and rotate this around the other way. Um, and like I said, this was just a um, Illustrator file, and it, which normally in any other 3D application, you would never be able to use an Illustrator file because it's not rasterized. Is that the right term? Is it, it's not like in a position that you can, it's, it's a vector-based image. There's, there's But since this is all part of the Adobe system, it's great, you can grab that. AI file and just simply drag and drop it in here and it works just like anything else. Like you can scale it up, you can wrap it around. Like if I wanted to just kind of position this right in the middle, awesome. Um, then I could also take the, uh, let's make this a hard plastic uh, background. And if I wanted to make that the exact same color as it was in the Illustrator file, like I'll make it the same blue. Just open it up here. Oh, I can pat it right there. I can just grab the hex color. Go into the base color of this, drop it in, matches perfectly, awesome. Away we go. Um, that is actually better. I One one thing to note, that's actually better than um, if you did the eyedropper tool in here, uh, just because what you're seeing in the render scene actually takes into account some lighting information and the light value can adjust the color of it. So just, just something to be aware of there. Um, all right, cool. So I've got, got, already got, already got this on, awesome. 
Um, I have for the straw, I'll just assign that same hard plastic. Uh, we'll make it white. Yes or no? You know, actually, we can make it. Let's make it the same color as this. Um, the apple itself. Just make it fun. All right. Great. Cool. So we got a uh, pink straw. Got our label. You know what? Let's actually let's actually get fun with this. Uh, let's let's push because again, the, the whole idea of this is that you can rapidly iterate and push different ideas. So let's just go ahead and make this a big old apple juice label. It's kind of wrapping around the sides here. Um, we'll see. Like we'll say, you know, like this is just our our design iteration. Because like, well, we'll give this a go. We'll see if people like this. Now, the one thing um, about this label that I wasn't crazy about was that see how there's like this outline around it like i, I kind of want like that's kind of boxing it in for me and i just want this design to feel kind of free so for, i can have this graphic selected and if i click image here just click the pencil icon all this will do is it opens it back up in illustrator and i can go in here now and select this outline and just delete it and all i have to do now is click file and save and when i hop back in the stager it's gone because what it did was it actually created a live link between those two things um that allowed me to uh to perform that that function so um really fun really cool stuff okay great so i've got my apple juice thing we'll go ahead and um keep it right out there perfect all right great got this let's go ahead and turn on my ray tracer see what like i really like that it's super easy, super fun. Um, now let's just build out that scene again. Again, um, I don't want to. I don't want to overcomplicate this because I'm really happy with with that result. So I'll just put down a ground plane, give it some walls here. Make sure, like, if I'm holding down Shift, that's allowing me to lock it um, as as you're seeing me rotate it, so I can just lock it to 90 degrees, so I know that these will fit together nicely. Awesome, just making like a little corner of a room there. Um, just gonna throw a little little podium down here for this for this guy to rest upon. Pull it down shift to reduce the height. Grab the juice box, pop it back on top there. Awesome. Now I'll go ahead and create my camera by clicking the camera with the plus icon. You will go ahead and uh, set that full life, make that 85. We'll make this a nice Maybe we can make it, we'll make, we'll do, we'll do both. Like we'll make one square one and I'll also do a, another camera just so you can see that, that function too of, um, let's do that a little bit. So you can see, you can see one at this angle and I can switch back to camera one, which is, uh, let me go ahead and make it, make it lower, make it, you know, this is, this is a, a giant size juice box. There we go. Awesome. All right, great. Now for this one, I'll add a little depth of field here. And for the other camera, yeah, add a little depth of field of this guy too. I think it looks nice with this. Nice like a small prop. All right, so let's just, uh, we'll take the ground. Uh, we will make that match the same blue color for now. And then I'll grab these other objects, grab my little eyedropper, select that so it's all tied together. All right, little little strong, little strong on the color. We'll bring it back on that just a little bit. All right, go back to the material. You can grab any one of them because they're all linked together. And then you can either uh, slide this. Yeah, I'll just slide this down here and make it a little less saturated. All right, cool. Uh, just just for the heck of it, let me see if this. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not I'm not as crazy about it as as the red. Yeah. Okay. We'll keep we'll keep it like that. I'm liking this. This is feeling good. All right. So now uh, when we go to render it out, you can just simply click, click render. Got my two. I selected both cameras. Changed the format to PSD. I forgot to save this. I got so excited. We'll call this uh, Apple Juice. And then let's see. I think we're all set. So yeah, Apple Juice got it saved in my uh, right folder. Just click that, click, put it back in my render box. Got two of them. Click render. Oh, make sure, you know, put this one. Uh, we'll put this one in. Now we'll make this one high, just for the heck of it. 
give it give it our normal minute here and I'll, I'll circle back with you all right so there we go we got these all rendered out i sent these to high so the render took us slightly longer so three whole minutes and two whole minutes to get these out um so yeah so again we can just go ahead and show these in the folder and then we will go ahead and launch these over into photoshop where we can do all of our final cleanup all of our adjustments and do, you know again add all that photoshop witchcraft that you all like to do uh you're also good at to get your final images so that is all uh if you have any questions or you have any requests for future videos please reach out to me either on linkedin through my email uh subscribe to my newsletter the 3d artist uh newsletter and i'm super excited to connect with all of you again so hopefully this was helpful and i will talk to you all soon